Okay, so section 1.5, we're talking about protocol layers and service models, and this really is the core of this class. This is what this class is all about. This is a very brief overview of the structure of most of the rest of this class, the layers. We're going to start at the top and go down. Uh, but the first thing we got to understand is why are there layers um, and w what function do they serve? So the big thing to start off with, the big motivation is that networks are really complex. There's lots of pieces, hosts, routers, links, there's lots of applications, protocols, hardware, software involved um, in this system. So a super complex system, lots of pieces, how can we organize them so that they, um, so that we can understand them, we can work on them, we can fix them, we can extend them, we can make them better. And the author goes through and has a really nice analogy between the organization of air travel, like going to an airport, and network architecture. So the idea is that we have, uh, if you just kind of slice off the top of air travel, you have the idea of you purchase a ticket and you give them the ticket and then you arrive at your destination. If there's something wrong, you can complain about it, but you don't have to understand how the rest of that stuff works, all those lower levels. You can get from point A to point B by buying a ticket, giving them the ticket, and then, and then you're there, kind of, all right? Um, if we look at it deeper, we can see that really there's this complexity of a baggage check where you give them the bag, um, and somehow the bag makes its way to the other, your destination. Um, again, that's some complexity that we don't have to understand the details of. We just know, I give you this bag, and ideally, I get it back at my destination. Baggage claim, right. All right. At another level, we have all this gate procedure, the way we load and unload. There's all there's rules, right? There's like a protocol that defines the right way to get on the plane based on the gates um, and get off the plane. There's runway procedures, um, and there's even airplane routing procedures. You think about how the airplanes get from point A to point B, right? The FAA is involved, right? Lots of complexity. Do you have to think about that? as a passenger on the airplane? No, and do you want to? Okay, absolutely not, right? There's all this complexity um, that you would like to hide and you'd like for you to just think about the level that you care about, all right? And networks work the same way. So um, as the authors point out here, the layering of the airline kind of looks like this, where you've got the ticket layer, you've got a baggage layer, the gate layer, the takeoff landing layer, and the airplane routing layer. And the only things that we have to know about at each layer are the other pieces of the, of the component at that layer. We're going to provide a service to the layer above us by using the interface provided to us from the layer beneath us. Okay, so each layer implements a service through its own internal actions, and we rely on the services provided by the layer beneath us. So why do we layer? Why do we layer? Um, I'm going to make the case that there are two reasons why we layer. Number one, it's about abstraction. Abstraction is a big word, um, but it comes up all the time in computer science. Um, I think Lance can attest to that. Uh, it's important because in complex systems, we need to be able to handle them. Um, we need to be able to understand them, and we need to kind of break it into pieces. Uh, and not have to understand everything to understand something. The second thing, which is related to abstraction, is modularization. Um, and modularization is breaking things into pieces. It, it makes maintenance easier. It makes updating the system easier. It allows us to actually change one layer without having to change everything. Right? If you can change one layer, and as long as it still looks the same to the thing above it and the thing below it, so if the interface is still the same, we can change the actual implementation however we want. Um, think about this if you go back to here. If, um, if the protocols for the runway, how, how airplanes drive around on runways, if those change, um, should we still be able to get where we want to go? Yeah, so like, I mean, if this airport, you know, airport in Nashville wants to let planes go in alphabetical order, uh, and another guy wants to go, uh, the, the, if the airport in Memphis w wants to let people go in 
first come first serve, right? That internal logic in a layer, those can be different as long as um, we still connect with the gate mechanism and the routing mechanism below us. We can still accomplish the job of getting the plant from point A to point B, even if um, there's some internal differences at each layer. Okay, so the two big things here, abstraction and modularization. And really, I think you can make the case that modularization is um, kind of a, a subcomponent of abstraction. Okay. We want to divide and conquer this complex system. We want to allow um, this complex communication to occur in a way so that each layer has a well-defined function. Each layer does one thing and it does that thing well. We'd like the interfaces, that's where the layers meet, the way they can talk to each other, we'd like those interfaces to be very neat and clean. We would like to exchange minimal information between layers. If there's more information that has to be exchanged between layers, there's more complexity, more um, interdependency between those layers, and we'd like to minimize that. Uh, abstraction is all about hiding details. It's about not having to understand all the complexities underneath you to actually get something done. So we like to hide the details that don't really matter at, at a higher level. Um, and a layer should contain similar functions. That is to say, um, the things that are in one level, one layer, ought to be related to each other. This kind of goes back to that idea, um, that OOP idea of high cohesion, low coupling. Um, we've got high internal cohesion, but low external coupling. Um, okay, so that is what we want to say about layers. What questions do you all have about layers and abstraction, modularization? Anything? Okay, so that's kind of the motivation for this. Now we're going to look at the specifics of how the internet protocol stack is layered. And it's layered into these five areas, these five layers. Application transport network link and physical. And these are the five things that we're going to look at in this class. This is chapter two, three, four, five. Um, physical we're not going to cover in this class. As I said before, that's more of a kind of an electrical engineering. Um, really in your physics class you're going to cover it more just in terms of the way signals move. Um, more electrical engineering than computer science, so we won't cover physical. <coughs> question? I have a question. Is there like a word, like a sentence that someone has came up with to remember all these? Like, oh, I feel like that's where Lance shines. I'm sure you guys can come up with something really memorable and really cool for that. I'm, or you can maybe Google. All trees need little pecans. All trees right, need so little pecans. All right, very good. All trees need little pecans. Thank you, Boom. Z. All right, problem solved. Okay, um, let's see. okay. let me just mention here a, a brief overview of each layer and then we'll dig into it more deeply in a few more slides and then we'll have a whole chapter on each of these. So the application layer is all about supporting and implementing network applications. Some very common network applications that we're used to are things like HTTP, which is how the web is implemented. Um, SMTP is a protocol for sending email. FTP uh, is a protocol for transferring files. These are examples of protocols that exist in the application layer. Going down a level, the transport layer provides process-to-process -process data transfer. And we're going to talk more, a lot more about this uh, even in Chapter 2. But the transport layer is getting data from a process, a program on one computer, to a program or process on a different computer. The two big protocols in the internet protocol stack that do this are TCP and UDP. TCP and UDP are the transport layer protocols. Um, going down <coughs> another level, the network layer is all about routing datagrams. Right? That's the name of the packets at this level. Routing datagrams from source to destination. And this is going to involve the internet protocol IP. Um, as well as the routing protocols that set up the routers and allow them to exchange information into forward information, route information. The link layer is about data transfer between neighboring network elements. All right. 
So this is, the link layer is just about how do I get from point A to point B. There's only going to be one link in between them. The, whereas the network layer is about how to get from point A to point B, and there could be lots of links between them. All right? So it's kind of single link versus mini hops. Um, Ethernet is an example of a link layer protocol. Wired Ethernet or Wi-Fi is another link layer protocol. The physical layer is just about the bits on the wire. It's about how do we put bits in a signal and get it across either a wire or the air. The, this organization, the um, International Standards Organization, ISO, defined this model a long time ago. They created this protocol stack that a lot of it looks similar, but it ended up never really um, being used. It's a nice formal model for education, but not really used in practice. The internet protocol stack that we just looked at is what we're going to look at more. Notice the difference is these two layers, the presentation layer and the session layer. Um, these two layers, if they're needed by a system, would need to be implemented in the application layer. So if you need to keep session information between sessions of a network application, you're going to have to do that in the application layer. Um, and the same thing for presentation information. Um, that's enough to talk about that. Um, I do have this interesting diagram that maybe helps you think about how the layers connect to each other. The highest level of the application layer is talking to an application layer at the other computer, between the client and the server, say. Between each layer, there is an interface. So you can see that really the protocol is implemented between the two end systems um, for the application presentation session and transport layer. Those are end-to-end -end protocols. And every, every um, on one system, you talk to the protocol beneath you and above you through some well-defined interface. So that's what those, all those arrows mean. Now, once we go beneath the transport layer, um, we, when we go to the network layer and the link layer and the physical layer, that connection is actually um, done on a point-to-point um, -point basis. So in all these upper layers, the application layer speaks to the, the host at the other end, the, the end point. The two endpoints talk to each other, right? This so user the the client server application endpoints talk to each other. Um, all the way down to the transport layer, it's end to end. But once we get to the network link and physical layer, that's a point to point kind of communication, and those communications will go point to point to point to point all the way across till we get to the other endpoint. Okay. So. Um, I think it's important to make this distinction that there are two types in a very foundational way of communication entities. One type is an end-to-end. -end. And end-to-end, -end, I have in blue here, um, is the client and the server. And those are the ultimately the two endpoints that are talking to each other. That the only, um, only the endpoints are active. Point-to-point -point, communication entities are used on every relaying device. So they're implemented throughout the path. Every single one of those um, green squares that's connected with the lines represents a point-to-point -point path. Does that distinction make sense between end-to-end -end and point-to-point? -point? Right, and so the layers operate in different, um, in each of these different models, in one of these different models. So the Application and transport layers are end-to-end, -end, um, and the network and link and physical are point-to-point. -point. So if you break it down like this, that layer between transport and network, we go from end-to-end to point-to-point. -to -point. And this is, this, is, I, this is important to keep in mind as we go through this class, uh, because that really does affect who's communicating and what the job we're trying to accomplish is. All right, so um, on further quizzes, you can expect to be asked, name each of the five protocols and if they're end-to-end -end or point-to-point. -point. Let me say a word about each of these. Application is end-to-end -end and it's all about user services. Um, here's three very common ones of many that could be named. The web, um, email, file transfer, all these are done at the application layer on an end-to-end -end basis. The transport layer 
is another end-to-end -end layer that really its purpose is to hide defects and limitations of the network. Right? So the network may not be perfect. It may not always get every datagram from, um, from one endpoint to the other endpoint. The transport layer sits between the application layer and the network layer to make sure that that transport of this packet from one endpoint to another endpoint actually happens. So if packets are lost at the network layer, the transport layer is going to make sure that they're resent if that's important that they reliably get there. So in a network system that may lose or duplicate or reorder packets, which is the IP network system, you see, understand those three things. Packets could be lost entirely. Um, packets could be duplicated. So you send one packet, you get two of them on the other end. Um, or if order is important, um, we can't trust the network to actually send the packets in this or get the packets delivered in the same order that they were sent. Did you uh, say loose? Uh, that is a typo. Oh, is, I just uh, didn't know there's like a term like loose no. little term. So my bad on that. That should be loose. Just one of. I always get those words confused. Um, so those kinds of defects in the network system are going to be masked through the abstraction of the transport layer. And the transport layer is going to go back kind of behind the scenes to the application layer and fix that. So if there are, if the packet's lost, it'll make sure that we send another one. If it's duplicated, it'll make sure to identify the duplicate and get rid of one of them. If the packets are out of order, it will make sure to reorder them, which is going to take some work to do that. Well, that's what I said. All right, so if um, the reason this may happen is because we send messages that are too big. Um, so maybe there's a, a huge one megabyte packet, but our network system can only send packets that are 100 kilobytes. All right, so that's an issue. The transport layer is going to say, okay, I can break that up into chunks, send the chunks, and then reassemble them on the other side. I think I have some animation for that, yeah. So we can break it up into five messages that are small enough to fit across the network system and then send each one individually. Notice, in this case, the packets are delivered out of order. Packet two didn't make it, and packet four was corrupted. So the transport layer is responsible for identifying these issues and fixing them if the application needs that level of service. Question, Lance? All right, so, uh, and then we have to recompose the message once that's done. Okay. The network layer, going down another level, is a point-to-point -point protocol. Um, the functions that it provides, it's going to provide addressing at the network layer so that every host has a network address. What we're thinking about here is an IP address at the network level. That's what an IP address is. It's an address for the network layer. It's going to provide routing functionality to route data over multiple hops um, by sending it to the appropriate routers. And lastly, it may or may not provide congestion control. That is, to have some mechanisms to recover from the issue when there's too many packets to be sent uh, over, a, over a link or through a route. Uh, may also may or may not provide administration functionality to make it so that we can administer routers. All right, the link layer is also point to point. The link layer provides um, a, a data link layer. Um, the, you can see the link layer is doing two things. The data link layer does framing um, and error control. Framing just means breaking the data up into frames that will fit across the network. Um, frames are just kind of what packets at the link layer. Error control means I want to detect when the packet is corrupted, when errors get introduced into the packet, into the frame, and replace them. Uh, or not replace, fix them. At least be able to detect them and perhaps correct them. Flow control is the process of keeping the receiver from being overwhelmed by the sender. You can imagine if a lot of packets are being sent by the sender, 
uh, more than the receiver can receive, then the sender is wasting his time sending them. So flow control will help slow down a fast sender. And that's implemented at the link layer. The other part of the link layer is the medium access control, the MAC layer. Uh, perhaps you've heard of a MAC address on Ethernet, and that's what that, that means. It's the address that's used to resolve contention on the channel. That is, the MAC layer lets the channel be shared fairly by lots of devices that are trying to use it at the same time. So we'll talk a lot more about MAC layer um, when we do the link layer chapter. Physical layer is also point to point. As I said, it's just about transmission of raw bits from node to node um, over fiber or twisted pair or electromagnetic waves in a wireless environment. Um, so this deals with electrical and mechanical specifications. All of this very electrically, uh, is this, this is electrical engineering. So as computer scientists, we're not going to be um, as focused on it in this class. All right, so this chart picture really shows what the, how the layers work together and what encapsulation is. So encapsulation is about adding additional information to a packet so that the packet can be sent using another higher level protocol. So uh, the way this system works is initially we have a message uh, that the source is trying to send to the destination perhaps over multiple hops. You seeing this? All right, this is this is big. This is important. When the source is trying to send this message, this is an application layer message. Um, it's going to send it to the application layer, which will that application layer is going to send it to the transport layer. As the packet moves down, it's going to have some header information for the transport layer added on. So that header information is appended to the payload of the message, which is, of, of the packet. Uh, notice that for each of these layers, they each have a special name for a packet. At the application layer, the packet is called a message. At the transport layer, this whole packet, packet all together, including the header and the message, that's header and payload, that's called segment. As this packet moves down to the network layer, it'll have more header information appended onto it, and it's called a datagram. So a datagram is a packet at the network layer. Some people use the word packet to describe just to, as to mean datagram, um, but sometimes it's used more loosely, and that's the way I'm going to use it in this class, which is uh, a packet means any general chunk of data that you're being sent over a network, not just the thing at the network layer. Okay. All right. The same thing happens again at the next level, the link layer, and onto the network header and the transport header, we're going to append the link layer header. This whole thing, this whole packet is called a frame. This frame will be sent out over the physical layer. The packet doesn't have a name at the physical layer. All right. Because you could see it as just a frame. It's still a frame. But it doesn't really have a name. Is network point-to-point? -point? Yes. Right, network, sure. link, and physical are point-to-point. -point. And then application transport are end-to-end. -end. Um, so what's going to happen is then this whole frame is going to be sent across this link to a switch. A switch is actually a link layer device. So it operates at the link layer. It's implementing the link layer protocol. So um, this animation isn't going to show it, but we can imagine it, that when we get to this point, we're going to extract the link layer information, that's this header. We're going to analyze it, we're going to process it, and then we're going to send out the packet to where it's supposed to go, the next link. And we're going to append then, it's going to remove this header, this link layer header, put a new link layer header on, and send that to this router. A router is a network layer device, so it's going to, ana it's going to implement the link and network layers, which means it's going to strip off the link layer header process it, figure out where it needs to go, pass it up to the network layer, it's going to take off the network layer header, process that, figure out which link it needs to go out on, and um, then to go back down the stack, and so it'll add on a new network layer header, a new link layer header, and send that out. At this point we'll be at the destination, as you can see over here, we'll have the 
the link layer header, network layer, transport layer header, it'll be passed up the stack and each, um, each level will use what is for, uh, use the header information, strip it off, do what needs to be done to implement the protocol at each layer using that um, header information and at, in the end we'll have the message back, the original message hopefully. Does this idea of encapsulation make sense to you? And what, what questions do you have about this? Because this is really important. Like, this is the whole picture. This is what we're talking about the rest of the year is what happens, really, the details of what happens in each of these headers to implement the protocols. I mean, it makes sense. I just don't remember what does what. Okay. Joey, questions? Lance? Okay. Very good. So this is this concludes section 1.5 about protocol layers and service.